Abby Russell. Uh, Alex Navarro. Let's go camping. Okay. Should I bring a big jacket? Uh, yeah. And if you can uh, find a way to fit that wide ocean in the trunk also, okay, it's we, pretty we're probably going to need there. that. Yeah. This is Wide Ocean Big Jacket, a game whose title I constantly get uh, wrong by reversing it. I, 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 all I know is there's an ocean and a jacket, and I forget the rest. I've said Big Jacket, Wide Ocean, I think, every time someone has asked me about this game, uh, so I'm an idiot. I'm Big sorry. Big Ocean, Wide Jacket. Yes. Uh, this is an $8 game. It is on Steam. It is on Itch. It is on Switch. Yes. Those are its platforms. It is $8. Uh, it is a short narrative piece, which we are just going to show a little bit of because it's also not, like I said, it's short. It's a very, I'd say I beat it under two hours for sure. Uh, and it is just kind of a story about some people that go camping. And you're playing it on the Switch. Yes, we are playing the Switch version okay. here. I have played a little bit of it. Yeah, I, I beat it all in one sitting. Uh, it One, because it is actually just compelling enough to keep... It was enough to keep me playing. Uh, but also, yeah, it is, it is, I beat it probably in like 90 to 100 minutes if mm. at most. Uh, so you are... There are four characters in this game. Uh, there's Mord, who is a 13-year-old girl. There is her new boyfriend, Ben who is also 13, uh, and then there are Aunt Chloanne and, uh, was it, Uncle Brad? That sounds right. Yeah, so that's Ben. That's Mord. Them's the aunt and uncle. Uh, and really, a lot of this game is reading and dialogue. Like, mm -hmm. it is a lot of these little sequences where the characters talk to each other as floating heads. Um, I like the style of this game. I like the art of it. Yeah, the the actual like in-game art is really nice. The the world has like a nice minimalist feel to it, mm -hmm. uh, but still evokes the feelings of, of going camping. Uh, and really, it's just kind of about it's just a little window into the lives of these characters and kind of their relationships with each other. There's Ben. He's a little bit of a nerd, but. You know, like, not like a stereotype, like, just kind of like a shy kid who is maybe yeah. not that outgoing. There are parts I liked with his dialogue where he's, like, trying to help out the uncle. Because it's, like, her family. So he's sort of like, hey, I'm here along for the ride. Like, yeah. I don't know your family, but, like, I'll help carry wood. I don't know. And then they're like, no, you're just making it worse. We yeah, it's, it's Mord's aunt and uncle. Yeah. Uh, and I get the impression that she's, like, close, but not that close with them. Interesting. Yeah. I've never, I don't think, gone on any kind of solo trip with... An aunt or an uncle? I don't think so. I'm like thinking on it. I'm like, eh, maybe. Like I've stayed at like my aunt and uncle's place before, but never like gone on yes. a trip with them. Yes, I think it's also different. Um, for the most part, my aunts and uncles have kids, so I have my cousins are always there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You ever go on a camping trip with your family? Oh yeah, I used to go on them all the time. I love camping. Yeah, my folks weren't really camping people for the most part. My mom is more so now these days, mm -hmm. but uh, back in the day, that was not really their thing. No, we loved to camp. We would go hiking. Camping's so fun. Yeah. I would also camp with, like, friends sometimes, too. I went camping with my neighbor once. Oh, uh, Jesus. I, we, we, were oh. like, we were friendly, and yeah. he goes on, like, regu he used to go on regular camping trips with, like, his buddies and fishing That's fun. and stuff. The so Jesus like was at Brad, not at your, you going camping with your neighbor. But. Yes. Um, Look at Brad. It's true. You do need a card to get really? into the parks. Well, I mean, you don't need it. You can just pay up front. But oh. like having a membership card, I believe, for uh, national parks oh, is like you get a discount or something. Um, a thing I used to love to do, this I would do as like 18 and young adult, mm -hmm. is I would love to do those little booklets for kids to get the badge at all the parks. I was really? far too old for them, but I enjoyed doing them. <laughs> I have a badge for the... Denali National Park. Mm. I have one for... Um, I think I have one for Governor's Island. Huh. I have a friend who used to work on Governor's Island. There's a there's a debate here about whether you should lie to park rangers. Well, my friend was a park ranger, and I think he'd say no. I mean, have you ever lied to a park ranger? Um, I'd probably lie to my friend. I don't okay. know. I'm not really much for lying, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, that seems to be Brad's stance is just don't lie. Yeah. Damn. That's Fair. smart. That's smart. Okay. We got some control here now. Who sticks their whole hand in their jeans pocket? Cool guys. Oh, you raised cool. a good point. Uh, do you know what like era this is in? Because I couldn't really place it. I think it's kind of non-specific. Okay. It doesn't really feel like there is a particular mm -hmm. time and space they are trying to go for. A Brant expert is coming down from YOLO is just a good sentence. <laughs> 
I don't know what a brand is. I don't know what a YOLO is. I think YOLO is a, a fictional place. Okay. It's true. Danger from rattlesnakes. Um, so would you say this is like an affecting story? So I only played 45 minutes, maybe yeah. half hour, 45 minutes. And I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I think I'm a little bit fatigued on this type of game. Yeah. Um, I, I've been playing a lot of games that are very dialogue heavy and yeah. reading heavy. And, uh, it's not a standout okay. necessarily. Like, I think it's, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Like the characters feel like the, there's, you know, a little bit of like a lived in quality to them. They're not just like you know, weird stereotypes. Like, they, they all have their own kind of distinct personalities. Yeah, I definitely sense that. They felt like both real people and also, like, a slight caricature of real people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, without being, like, a cliche. Yeah, and I think it's it's a nice little slice-of-life coming-of-age story, you know, for, for the kids, and there's a little bit that goes on with the aunt and uncle as well. But none of it is, like, very conflicted. Mm. Like, there isn't really, like, a central conflict anywhere in this story. It's very much just kind of about, like, hey, these people are in this space, you know, some of them are, like, the aunt and uncle are very used to camping, the kids aren't, and this is just kind of about the kids kind of discovering some things about themselves, and also, you know, the the aunt and uncle maybe discovering a couple of things about themselves, too, but it's not heavy in any specific way. So it's nice, but I wouldn't say that it was, like, super memorable. Yeah. So, like, I enjoy, the thing I, oh, I, God. I ah. every time they're there, it yeah. scares me. I'd say the thing I enjoyed most was just kind of like the little moments of wandering around, the little environments that uh, that crop up. The dialogue is good, and I, I enjoy the characters, but, like, I just kind of dug wandering around the space. Yeah. Relaxing music and ocean noises. Yeah. That's a good rule. Mord has this shit figured out. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's true. That's how marriage works, right? Having a joint bank account with someone seems uh, scary. Yeah, I don't do that. It's a lot of trust you got to put in somebody else. But I also think when you're married, it's probably different. Yeah, that's yes. I also feel like when you're married, like you're paying for stuff for each other. You know, like food and yeah. shit. It's all like a shared expense. Totally. Whoa, look at that stretch. Yeah. Big stretch. What up, Brad? Yeah. That's what relationships are, Mord. Yes, support your partner. Praise them when they stretch well. Mord, go praise Ben stretching. I don't think Ben's doing much of anything right now. So that's Cloan, right? Like that's how you would pronounce that. Or like clone. Not clone. Like Joan. I think it's Cloan. Cloan. That's how I read that it. Sounds right. I didn't really think about it. You know, sometimes you read a word and you never actually think about how it is pronounced. Yes, totally. And then you have to go and say it in front of people, and you're like, "Fuck, I sound like an idiot." Yeah. I think there was an Onion article this week that was like, uh, local woman realizes it, it starts saying the word erudite and immediately realizes she's never said it out loud before. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most terrifying thing. Yeah, it's especially harrowing if you're a writer and you spend a lot of time looking mm -hmm. at the sources and writing interesting words, and then at some point you have to say that word and you're like, oh, fuck. Yes, totally. Does Ben make a good first impression? Good question. Ben actually reminded me a lot of a kid that was uh, my best friend when I was real young. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, this kid, Doug, that grew up across the street from me. He had, they had they have very similar look and very similar affect. Mm -hmm. Not the one you went camping with. Not no. that neighbor. No. It was fun being a kid and have being friends with my neighbors, because now I feel like I don't talk to my neighbors at all. No, I, I mean, granted, living in the city is different. Yes. But, uh... Yeah, I have said maybe four words to my upstairs neighbor in nine years. Yeah. I and, know my super. I say hi to him. And two of those times, it was literally to hand him mail that had been mis 
this put in my box. Yeah. I also live in like a big building. So when I get mail that's bad, I just put it on the table next to all the mail where other people put their trash mail. Yeah. What else we got over here? Fire pit. Yeah. I don't think I can. Look I love it. starting a fire. Uh, I don't think uh, you want that on tape, uh, <laughs> you know, when, when the law comes around. I love starting a fire, and I mm. love um, em embezzling. Okay. All right. Well, these uh, we'll, we'll definitely make sure that this is submitted as evidence in your trial. Cool. Yeah, let's check some stuff out. Now we're a team. Wow. Bear, bear safe. safe. Safe from bear. Whoa. When I, uh, so I went on a class camping trip when I was in fifth grade. Wow, the whole class? Well, it was a small class, okay. to be that, fair. That'd be so stressful as, like, a chaperone for that. Oh, my God. Yeah, we had, it, like, my stepdad actually was one of the, oh, the parents fun. on it. That was how my, uh, my mom and him met. Really? Uh, it was at the school. Not on that trip, but at oh, that school, oh. yeah. Uh, that's kind of amazing, though. Yeah. That's, like, one of those movie situations. But we went to Yosemite, um, and... They were very adamant about like, hey, there's bears in this area, so be cautious about that. Wow. Uh, and you know, we didn't really run into uh, run afoul of any bears, but there was a point where during the trip we were not far from the campsite, and someone saw a baby bear climbing up a tree, <gasps> and everyone was like, oh my god, that's amazing, that's amazing. And then immediately one of the adults walks in, and is like, that means a mother bear is nearby. Walk away, walk away <laughs> from the baby bear. Don't get anywhere near it. Just, just. Get out of oh the way. My God. And then lo and behold, like 10 minutes later, we hear a mama bear come oh ambling through God. the trees. That's so scary. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing, but that's so scary. We got far enough away that the bear did not really take notice or interest yeah. in us, but it was it was funny. Wow. That was also the trip where I first saw my first rattlesnake. Oh, gosh. I don't think I've ever seen one, thankfully. Uh, it was in the middle of a hiking path, and uh, one of the teachers was like, nope, don't walk there. Go through the grass. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> we are not gonna, we're not going to usher that thing away. It's going to do what it wants to do. We just don't go near it. Wow. What a wild time for you. Those were like the two animals I saw on the trip, though. Otherwise, it was just like birds and fish. Wow. I remember once uh, I went hiking with my parents and we were drinking Capri Suns mm -hmm. and we were eating a snack slash lunch and just like goofing around. I was like probably like 10. And then like these like park ranger guys um, accused my parents of like smoking weed in the woods. And it was so bizarre. What was their evidence? I don't know. I think we realized later that like my stepdad, because I was a very picky eater at the time. So my stepdad was making fun of me and made a joke of like, oh, you'll eat this cracker. And then he like fake coughed. And, like, we were, like, drinking the Capri Sun, so, like, moving stuff to our mouth. But truly, there was no evidence. It was so bizarre. Huh. It was, like, one of those weird things when you're a kid and you see your parents have to, like, confront something. And you're like, what's happening? Am I in trouble? You know what I mean? Oh, that's so weird. It was really strange. Ugh. It's also, like, I don't know, especially nowadays where I'm, like, people smoke weed in the woods. Who cares? You know what I mean? Yeah, well, nowadays like, now it doesn't. Now it's, like, don't yeah. start a fire, but also, like. It's so weird. It was just so bizarre. I mean, the attitude was definitely very different back in yes. even like 10 or 15 years ago. Hey. So I don't think I'm going to go too much further into this. Like, yeah. there are more areas that open up. There, Like, each section of the game is kind of its own little scene in a different spot on around the camp campgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, they never get too much more elaborate than this. Like, there's some nice bonding moments between the characters. There's, like, stuff that happens. But again, it's a very low-key game. Like, it's not like a puzzle game or anything. No, not really. Uh, there are a couple of spots where you have to, like, walk to a place and do a thing, but mm -hmm. it is not really a puzzle. Um, so I would say that if you just want, like, kind of a nice, you know, little game, little story, uh, you got eight bucks burning a hole in your pocket, this is not a bad way to go. Like, I yeah. enjoyed my time with it. It's nice. Uh, but I feel like anyone looking for a little more adventure game or just, you know, anything more than just, like, a nice little slice of life story is not going to get that from this. Yeah. So, so it seems well done in what it's trying to do. Yeah. But maybe not doing anything that's, like, going to knock your socks off. Pleasant. So. Enjoyable. Yes. That is that is my decree on uh, Wide Ocean, Big Jacket. I got it. I got it in the right order. Big Jacket, Big Ocean. Yes. Uh, ocean Jacket, Wide Big. Ooh, I like. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, that is this game. I think you should uh, check it out if it uh, seems up your alley. Cool. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Abby.